Hello everybody, welcome to another educational video from EGIS Associates, now part of the Navy Resource Group. It's been a while since we did any sort of comparison between ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap, and a lot has happened since the last one we did. So I wanted to take this opportunity to, to go back and revisit what has been one of our most popular videos, the comparison of ArcGIS Pro to ArcMap and talk about some of the differences, things that have changed and, and whatnot, so that as you look to migrate uh, from ArcMap into ArcPro, that you'll have a better idea of what to expect as you, you do that. So let's talk a little bit about some of the differences between these two applications. So if you didn't see the original video I did comparing these two applications, I want to give you a little bit of history background so you don't have to go back and try to find the other video. But um, ArcMap has been around for a long time. It was first released in 1999. And as a result, while it was built on top-of-the-line architecture at that time, uh, here in 2020, it's a, well, it's not... Just a little, it's just dated. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. Um, the CARM, COM architecture that it was built on was really not um, designed to take advantage of all the things that we now have with multi-core processors, uh, large amounts of RAM, video cards, and so on. It just it those kind of things didn't really exist uh, back in '99 when this was first released, right? The most current version of ArcMap, uh, at least at the time of filming the video, is uh, 10.8.1. Now, originally it did start at version 8.0, which may seem a little weird. But if you go back uh, and you know that ArcGIS was really designed to replace ArcInfo Workstation as well as ArcViewGIS, um, ArcGIS continued the numbering system or numbering scheme from ArcInfo Workstation. So the last, I guess, big release of it was 7.2, if memory serves. I mean, that was a while ago, uh, but it continued that. And, of course, we've had a bunch of iterations of ArcGIS since then to the current version. So um, now let's take a look at Pro. So ArcGIS Pro 1.0 was first released in, in 2015. Um, it is absolutely a new product. It is not just an upgrade or improvement over the older ArcMap. Um, it's brand new. It's built on a .NET platform instead of the COM platform that was used with ArcMap. So being um, this newer .NET architecture, it really opens up the ability of ArcPro to take full advantage of current technologies. So it's fully 64-bit. Well, I say fully. Let me back that up and refresh. It's mostly 64-bit. At the core, it is 64-bit. There are some tools and things in there that still are 32-bit um, that Esri leverages. But at its heart, it is 64-bit, which means you've got to run it on a 64-bit operating system. Um, the advantage that 64-bit brings is its ability to, well, to, to use a lot more hardware. Um, and I get that's also the disadvantage. Arc Pro requires a whole lot more hardware to run successfully, meaning faster, bigger processors, a lot more RAM, more hard disk space, and so on. Um, and I'll actually link, I did a video a while ago, though it still holds true, on does your computer have enough horsepower to run Arc Pro? And that is something you definitely need to consider. Just because your system currently runs Arc Map without a problem doesn't mean it will do the same thing with Arc Pro. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, Arc Pro is replacing Arc Map and Arc Catalog, but not just Arc Map and Arc Catalog, it's also going to replace Arc Scene and Arc Globe as well. So a lot of these desktop applications that we use or have been using for a while now are being replaced by this one single application. And it is happening. Of course, that question then comes up, when? When is the old art map, art catalog, art scene, art globe that I've come to know? I won't say love <laughs> because it's kind of a love-hate relationship there. But when, when is it going away? And honestly, I can't give you a definitive answer on that. 
Um, there's several factors that are playing into to this. Uh, it is first off, you know, overall support uh, from Esri, them making the call of when that is going to happen. Um, and I think they're, you know, talking. I've heard everything from three to to seven years, and that seems to be an ongoing theme since it first came out. So, uh, at a minimum, you still have a couple of years at least before you are forced to make the transition. You may have more. Uh, the other decision factor with that is not just Esri, but the platforms it runs on. So it runs on Windows. And if uh, Microsoft decides that it no longer is going to support 32-bit applications in Windows, then at that point, when you upgrade to the version of Windows that drops that, then ArcMap won't run anymore, unless there's some sort of emulator or something else like that. So that's another factor that could impact this. Now, the most current version of ArcGIS Pro is 2.6.2. .2. Um, it seems to be a pretty good uh, release, a pretty stable release, all things considered. We'll take a look at it in just uh, a moment. So to do a, just a basic rough comparison between the two, if we look at hardware, so ArcMap is limited to four gigabytes of RAM. If your system has eight, 16, 24, 32, whatever gigs of RAM, uh, ArcMap will only be able to utilize four gigs of that. And that's part of it being a 32-bit application. 32-bit application are just limited to four gigs. And in 1999, that was, oh my God, no one even thought about having four gigs of RAM at that point. That would have been just uh, a ridiculous amount. Um, and so it was just limited, uh, the 32-bit the architecture just limited to only 4 gigs. So being 64 gigs in Arc Pro, you're pretty much unlimited as far as the amount of RAM you have. I'm currently running 32 gigs in my system. Um, love it, so more RAM is always better, so definitely that. Multi-core support. When you go buy a, a processor nowadays, once you get past whether you're going with Intel or AMD or well, ARM or whatever, um, next thing you're going to look at is how many cores. Is it a quad core uh, or more? Because now processors have 6, 8, 10, 12, 24, 32 cores in them. And those are really just mini processors on the main processing chip. And ArcMap, when it was built, you didn't have multi-core processors. You had some systems that had multiple CPUs in them. Uh, usually those were at server level, but most of your workstations did not have that. Nowadays, we've got all of these cores. I mean, the one I'm running right now um, is an AMD 2700 uh, Ryzen 7. And so it has eight cores in 16 threads. ArcMap it doesn't see all that. It, it's going to run a single core. It's a single threaded performance. Whereas Arc Pro is designed to leverage all of those cores. So it does things typically much faster than ArcMap uh, because it can spread out the wealth or computing requirements uh, across those different cores. So that's important to know. Also, uh, GPUs or graphics processing units. That's a dedicated video card. Okay, so whether it's AMD or NVIDIA, ArcMap is not really designed to utilize that, but Arc Pro is not only designed to utilize it, it's highly recommended you have one to run Arc Pro. Uh, as you'll see in a second, the interface between the two is going to be very different. Uh, ArcMap makes use of a toolbar interface, which in 1999 was a big step up from the command line driven ArcInfo workstation but it's very dated now. Uh, and Arc Pro utilizes that ribbon interface like you see in Word and Excel, PowerPoint, AutoCAD, Adobe Photoshop, and so on. So it's a much more modern interface. Uh, it's also um, smart, meaning that when you click on things, certain parts of the ribbon will activate, which I find to make it a more intuitive interface, especially for new users. Now, if you're a a dyed in the wool arc map user with a lot of years of experience you're probably not going to like the new interface but for a brand new user uh, it's much more comfortable because it's again similar to the other applications that most of us run so that's something to take in mind something else with arc pro is it supports 3d visualization of data so 
ArcMap, you can't view data in 3D. You have to have the 3D Analyst extension and open ArcScene or ArcGlobe to look at data in 3D. ArcPro, out of the box, allows you to do that. Uh, of course, both still have extensions to increase functionality. So your 3D Analyst, Spatial Analyst, Geostatistical Analyst, and so on are available for both. So uh, we got that. The other thing that is different is uh, the Python version used by these. So if you have a lot of Python scripts that you've developed for use in ArcMap or Arc Catalog, you're going to have to rework those to work with Arc Pro because ArcMap uses a 32-bit version of Python, the 2.7.18, whereas Arc Pro is going to use the 3.6.10, at least the most, and I'm talking about the most current versions of, of ArcMap and Arc Pro. Older versions of both are going to use different versions of Python. This is the most current, so 10.8.1 and 2.6.2. So these are important things to, to know. So let's jump over and take a quick look at these, do a side-by-side -side comparison, and see what we think. So we can jump into that real quick. Okay, so here we have Arc Pro sitting over here on the left side of the screen and Arc Map on the right side of the screen. So again, very apparent is the interface difference, right? So we've got this nice ribbon in Arc Pro and we have all these toolbars over here in Arc Map. Now there are some similarities. You still have uh, the contents. So over here in Arc Map, we call this the table of contents in Arc Pro we have a contents pane. There are windows in ArcMap, they're called panes in ArcPro. So to, to use the joke I've used several times in several other videos, ArcPro is full of panes. Ha ha. Anyway, um, but they serve the same purpose, right? So here I've got my uh, data view open with this map and I can see the layers and I can turn the layers on and off, I can open, you know, and change my symbology here in ArcMap, right? And I can do the same thing over here in ArcPro. However, the difference is going to be when I select the layer here in ArcPro, notice that some tabs appeared in the ribbon. So this was I was talking about it being smart. When you select different things in Arc Pro, different tabs will automatically appear. So you don't have to go hunting necessarily through toolbars or right clicking to get uh, color palettes or menus in Pro. A lot of it's just going to appear. So if I want to change, say, the symbology for this layer, when I select it, I can go to Appearance and do it here, or if I click on the line, then it's going to open the Symbology pane. I can pick from my gallery of predefined symbols in my styles, or go to Properties and make the change here. So um, with Arc Pro, you'll also find there's usually at least two, three, sometimes four ways to do something. Um, so that's important to note. And if I want to do labeling up here, I can click here to go to labels. Now, something else with Pro that I want to show that's a good bit different, I'm going to go ahead and close that symbology pane down, is notice I've got these tabs across the top. So Arc Pro works in something called a project. So anybody that's used the old Arc View GIS application back in the 90s will remember APR files. Well, Arc Pro has revised or revamped or brought those back, I should say. And um, they're now APRX files, but the concept's the same. So in a single project file in Arc Pro, I can have multiple maps, both 2D, 3D, base maps, all can be brought in. I can have multiple database connections, like you see here. I can have multiple layouts. So whereas ArcMap, so I go back into ArcMap, I'm limited to a single layout per MXD file. In ArcPro, I can have multiple layouts and multiple maps. So, and they don't, the maps in here, I mean, it depends on how you want to organize your projects, but they don't even necessarily have to be directly related. So here I have a 3D scene for the city of Tripville, which is a data set I use for training purposes. But then I also have um, a another 3D scene here that I'll open up 
that's for the number of GISPs, GIS Certified Professionals, across the United States. So one's a city data set, and one's a, a more national data set. Uh, again, all in a single project. So you're not limited to just the one um, layout uh, or the one uh, data location or whatnot. You can include multiple things in a single project, which is kind of nice. It makes it easier. You don't have to go hunt for the right MXD and so on. So it makes some of the data file management a lot easier in my mind. Uh, again, that's up to me. I've been using Pro for a long time. I really like it a good, good bit. Um, let's see other things. Uh, again, we have multiple things laid out for us and have multiple things open in tabs. Uh, you can have multiple maps open. So I've got the water system map here. I can actually undock a map or a scene and, and view them like that. Or I can still have them Whoops. free-floating. So if I have multiple monitors, I could have maps open on different monitors within the same project. Go ahead and dock that back where it's in with everything else. Okay. Now the same is true. I'm going to go back to the 2D map here. If you open attribute tables, we've got the water lines open. Let me open the hydrants. And again, there's still the right click in, in Arc Pro, just like in Arc Map. And one thing I like about, um, I don't know what that was open for. Anyway, uh, notice I can pull my tables out here. And they can still be in separate windows. If you want to dock them together, you can certainly do that. So they're in one window like it is in ArcMap, but you have the option in Arc Pro to keep them completely separate. So that's another nice advantage, at least in my mind, with, with Pro and something we used to be able to do uh, in older versions of ArcMap, going back to 8.3 and 9.0 and so forth. Um, instead of having to all have them in a single window, so here's the uh, table. Move it out of the way here a little bit. And then I'll open this table. All right. So in this one, you know, you're limited in ArcMap of having all the tables in a single window. Now you can dock them so they're side by side in the same window, but you're still limited. All the tables have to be viewed in this one window in ArcMap. Pro, that's not a requirement. Another feature that people either love or hate with Arc Pro is you're always in an edit session. Okay by default. Now, I'm going to show you in a second a way you can change that, but there is in ArcMap, if I want to edit data, I've got to go over here to the Edit Toolbar, Start Editing Data. And once I do that, then I can begin coming in here and selecting features and changing them and doing whatnot. In Pro, that's not a requirement by default. If I want to go in and say add a new feature on this water system, say a new water lateral. I just go to the edit tab, open my create features pane, make sure I have water line set as editable. Just click here, click here, draw my new line, go in and edit my attributes you know, whatever, six inch, right? And do that without having to um, start an edit session. And then I could hit save or discard at this point. So by default in Arc Pro, you're always in an edit session. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, with the newest versions of Pro, there is an option that you can enable it would require you to start and stop editing. So if we go to project and down to options and down to editing, then we can go down uh, a little bit more. Let's see if I can, there it is. So under session, enable and disable editing from the edit tab. So if I check that box there, I'm gonna go back. Now in the edit tab, you'll see this button appears, the edit button. So if this is in blue, 
it's ready to edit. If it's not in blue, then you can't edit. So Pro now has the ability to enable starting and stopping editing like you had in ArcMap. Uh, but by default, that's not the case. By default, you can always edit in Pro. Okay, so that's something important to, to note. Um, let's go back and we'll talk about a few other differences between the, the two here. Okay, so there are some things that Arc Pro does not do, but ArcMap does. Um, and that is important to know. So one of those is geometric networks. So those that work in the utility industry or with utilities rely on geometric networks quite a bit to verify connectivity across the linear network that makes up the utility, be it electric, water, sewer, gas, and so on. Arc Pro does not support geometric networks, and it probably never will. Um, what Esri has done is they've built two new things. So they have something called the utility network, which is not just something for Pro, but relies on Arc Server. Uh, I'm sorry, ArcGIS Enterprise now, get the right terminology. Um, and it's a series of a data model and tools and things that all work together uh, to build this network out. So you have proper connectivity and have all the stuff built into it. It's a pretty complex thing, uh, but it has a lot of functionality. Something they just released with um, 2.6 is something called the Trace Network. And this is really the more direct replacement for the geometric network. It currently only works in a file geodatabase, but it has the same basic functionality that you find in a geometric network. Um, I don't know why Esri is changing it. I don't get it, but whatever. Um, if you use cartographic representations, and that's that rules-based symbology, um, Arc Pro doesn't support that. I'm not sure if it will or not. They really want you to start using something called Arcade, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, so that's um, something to consider. If you're still using personal geodatabases, I really don't think anybody's working in coverages anymore, but uh, if you're using personal geodatabases, those MDB files, Arc Pro does not support it will never support it, according to Esri, um, and can't even read it. I mean, it doesn't even know it exists. So if you're running those, you will need to port those into a file geodatabase. It's not a hard thing to do. You really ought to do it anyway, because file geodatabases uh, are much more efficient. They're faster. They don't have the storage limitations and all that. The big drawback to uh, going to a file geodatabase from personal is you no longer can use Microsoft Access on the back end of it. So that's something there. Also, if you're using the parcel fabric for Arc Map, Arc Pro doesn't support the Arc Map parcel fabric. It has its own new parcel fabric, and we'll talk about that in just a second as well. So something important to note. Now, there are a lot of things that Arc Pro will do that ArcMap doesn't do. Esri has really put most all of their focus over the last few years into Arc Pro, not really doing much for ArcMap as far as new capability, new functionality, and they don't really intend to because, as I said, Arc Pro is replacing it. Why would they spend a lot of money to continue to develop a product that's basically dead, right? So here's some other things that Pro does. So first off, you can edit in multiple workspaces at one time, okay? So what does that mean? Well, what that means is if you have data in a map that comes from different locations, maybe certain layers reference a file geodatabase, certain layers reference a shapefile, and some layers reference a web feature service, okay? In Arc Pro, you can edit all of those layers, regardless of where they reference, at any time. In ArcMap, if you had a, ma a map that had layers referencing all these different data source locations, when you start editing, it asks you which one of those locations do you want to edit. Do you want to edit the shape files in this folder? Or do you want to edit the file geodatabase? Or do you want to edit the SDE geodatabase? You can't edit all of those, and you can't even edit, as far as I know, um, it's possible it's a shame, but you can't edit the web feature services. Okay, so in Pro, it doesn't matter where your data comes from. If it's an editable format, you can edit. There's no having to pick which one you're wanting to edit. So that's a nice thing, makes it more efficient, more effective. Um, 
there is an autosave option for your edits in Art Pro. So you can enable it so that it automatically will save your changes at some interval you decide. You get to pick what that interval is. Okay, so that's a nice thing if you are one of those that kind of get to working and you often forget to save, right? You can enable the autosave so it'll do it. Now, it will pop up a are you sure you want to save window unless you disable that. So that is something to keep in mind, which is kind of nice if you don't want to save because once you save, just like in Arc Map, in Arc Pro, when you save, you cannot undo what you've done. Once it's saved, it's committed. No undoing it short of re, you know, going back and re-editing everything. Okay. Um, one big, I guess, benefit to Pro is it's highly integrated with Esri's web and cloud technologies. And by that, I mean, it's tied directly into ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise through Portal so that you can connect to and pull in web services. And if they're editable feature services, you can edit them right there in the map. Okay. You can pull that in and just edit right there, um, which is really nice, which means you can have people out in Collector using Collector uh, or the new um, mobile apps that Esri is coming out with. Out there in the field editing data, you can pull in the same web service into ArcGIS Pro. And as they're syncing those services, uh, those changes they're making the field back, you're seeing those real time. And then you can make changes to the data as well. Um, so that's really nice. Also, it allows you, if you will need to work disconnected, you can download that feature service, check it out, and work in a disconnected environment, uh, and then sync those changes back up later when you have a connection. So that's really, really uh, cool. We're doing that a lot here now with the, the Davy Resource Group and EGIS Associates uh, when we're out there working with our field crew. So we can keep tabs on what's going on, help answer questions uh, from the office, deal with issues quickly. It's, it's really a nice feature. Um, I mentioned the utility network. Net, hmm, let me speak English. The utility network, there we go, uh, is now supported with Pro, and that's also tied in with ArcGIS Enterprise as a server product. And so that really takes utility data to the next level. The ability to not only do traces and, and those things, but actually build the network tools to properly build connections, laterals, and all those things in there. It's really, really cool. Um, very complicated. Won't say it's easy, but uh, can really build out a um, utility down to a very detailed level that you just couldn't easily do before the utility network. Also with that is Arc Pro has its own parcel fabric. So as I mentioned, it will not support the old Arc Map parcel fabric. Yes, you can view the data in Arc Pro that's in part of the old Esri parcel fabric from ArcMap, but you can't make any changes, edits, or whatnot with Pro. Uh, what you can do is migrate data from the old parcel fabric to the new. Arc Pro has tools to do that. Thing to keep in mind, once you migrate to the Arc Pro parcel fabric, your ArcMap users will not be able to get to it. So you need to be aware of that. So migration can be problematic if you have users still straddling the fence between both platforms. Esri's come out with something new called Arcade. This is what Esri refers to as an expression language. So what you use this for is to create labeling expressions, symbology expressions, uh, even for the pop-up information pop-up window, you can create uh, virtual fields with values that show up in that uh, with Arcade and they continue to expand the use. Now the nice thing with Arcade well, there's several nice things. First, it's cross-platform compatible, meaning it works in Arc Pro, it works in ArcGIS Online, and it works in ArcGIS Enterprise. And uh, what you see in one is what you should see exactly in the other, which is not always the case with things like Python. The other thing is it's a very lightweight or language, so it's fast. So it's really good for anything that you are gonna to publish to the web or view with mobile applications or those kind of things. So it, it really is much more efficient than even Python. Uh, not that Python's not a, a good language or powerful, uh, but Arcade's a little bit more um, speedy, as it were, uh, with that. So that's a good thing. I uh, mentioned that you can display 3D data without an extension in Arc Pro, but you can also edit 3D data. So not only can you look at it and view it and print it and all, but you can actually edit 3D data in Arc Pro without any extension. So you don't have to have the 3D Analyst extension to edit and display 
3D data in Pro. Now, if you want to analyze it in 3D, yes, you have to have the 3D analyst extension still. But just to work with it, you don't have to. Um, as I mentioned, it's got the direct integration with Portal and AGOL, which is very nice. It supports a lot more 3D formats from various LiDAR to voxel layers and so on. And it also supports the new Esri uh, notebook in there, which I admit I haven't taken a, a good look at uh, to know exactly what all that entails. But um, it's got some pretty neat functionality from what I understand. I, again, haven't had the chance to delve into it, but that's something new that also is cross-platform support uh, for those notebooks from uh, AGOL as well as um, ArcGIS Enterprise. So again, increasing that level of cross-platform things. So anyway, I hope that gives you a, a good update on the differences between ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to, to answer them. So um, if you need help trying to migrate over to Arc Pro or ArcGIS Enterprise or even maybe configuring AGOL, that'd be ArcGIS Online, um, feel free to reach out because we're really here to help you consume that power of place. We can help you with enterprise GIS design and implementation, systems integration, application development, whether it's desktop, mobile, or web. Um, do your planning if you're trying to get a good working plan on how to do the migration to Pro. You know we can help you out. Do you need to implement the uh, new utility network? Thank you, phone, for making noise that I didn't want you to make. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, like I said, if you need help with a plan to do the migration, or do you need something, we can help you with that. Uh, we can also provide staffing assistance, uh, Renatech services, where you need some help with some GIS programming analysis. Uh, field data collection, you name it, uh, we can help you out with that. Uh, whether it's on site or remote, we can do that. Uh, we also do training and technical support. So, um, got a lot of training out there for various levels from beginner to advanced. Uh, we do also offer technical support packages where um, if you need help, you don't like waiting on Esri's tech support line, you can pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot us an email, and we respond very quickly. Uh, and there's none of this talking to a low tier person. We can get you to the right person immediately. So that's pretty nice. So uh, feel free to reach out to us. Get our uh, website, www.egiassociates.com. Give us a call, 678-710-9710. Or shoot us an email at info at egiassociates.com. So hope you found the video helpful. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't. Leave comments if you have any questions or concerns or if you have suggestions for new videos. We'd love to see those. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, and hit the notification bell. So if you want to know anytime we release a new video or whatnot, you'll find that out when we hit the notification bell. So with that, look forward to seeing you all in the next video.